Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I just speak here. No, I just speak it. Yeah, I'm speaking. Hello, everyone. Our next speaker is open source and open minded. He will present his experience about emerging concepts in software development. Friedke Mufke. Thank you. So my type, title is User Task Delegation in Applications. But to make it a bit more sexy, I said, uh, we have a better uh, title that's Getting a three months job done in 30 minutes. So let's see whether we can achieve that. So I, I want to talk about um, task-driven software engineering. So where you don't have a whole concept, but you really have a small uh, task that the user wants to do, and you try to implement that. So it's a user action, something the end user on the, f on the device, on the computer is doing. And um, yeah, it's usually with uh, user interface, uh, in the concept of user interface design. And I want to talk about um, applications on platforms that are usually monolith monolithic. So independent sandbox applications, not talking to each other. And then the idea is how to get over the borders. So it's, it's not really anything new to have inter-process communication. Um, so back uh, in, the, in the 90s, there was the uh, dynamic data exchange server and uh, the communication object model. And also on um, the Java Enterprise uh, Edition of ja yeah, Java Enterprise Edition, you have Java Beans, where you try to exchange data. So that was the first step. Then uh, you have web services, where you try to um, ch share the functionality. And then uh, you tried also to share graphic user interface in applications. So and the first step was, for example, annotations on web services that gives you an idea about the user interface for a certain function. And now um, we, we tried to solve the problem where one software component uh, tries to do something uh, oh, le yeah uh, tries to do something by another component by a third party component that is not known to the original component but that is known to the user so there there are two different points one is you don't have to implement all the functionality again because there is another component that can do it for you and the other thing is that the user is used to this uh, third-party component. So he chooses which component can do the task for you. I want to give you examples what is uh, possible. So, for example, you want to share data. There you can do it by Twitter, by email. And you, as a uh, software developer, you don't know what is the favorite service for this action. So you want to delegate it to the uh, most suitable for the user. Then uh, you can pick uh, media, pick an image or a, a video stream, or you want to edit something. So there's a list of uh, actions that are quite, um, um, quite usable for, for this user task delegation. So what, what we want to avoid is something where you really have to put all the different services on one place uh, and implement this all. So even just using the APIs is uh, uh, cumbersome. So you want to have just one button that can cover all the different cases. So yeah, it's called NASCAR problem because there's the uh, car racing in the US where you have all the different uh, sponsors. So we don't want to have that. 
we want to have um, yeah, just one single button. There's already uh, this kind of task delegation in Android. So there you, you are free to define whatever action you want to share, delegate. Um, and it's built in, in the platform. So you have uh, a central repository where application can register their services on install time. So you install an application on Android, and then you have uh, the service available by other, for other applications. If you want to go deeper in the code, there's a package manager service. There you can look up how it's handled, uh, so with map, hash maps and how you pass the manifest. But uh, if you're interested, we can talk about it later. The problem is a bit how you can discover the services. So you are um, a, a developer, and you want to delegate the task, but you don't know whether there's already a service for this. So currently, there's not really an official discovery. You can't browse uh, the Google Play by looking for kind of how you can delegate it to other, uh, other services. So there's a website, it's openintense.org, where we try to, to collect all these informations, uh, the different applications that offer third-party services. And how it looked like, so you have, in Android, you have a manifest where you describe what your application consists of. And the most important thing for this delegation is where you declare that you can handle certain intents. So you have, uh, in, for a certain activity, for a certain user interface, you have an intent filter where you declare, OK, I can, for example, um, view, so if the, if the user wants to view an HTTP page, then I can do it for you. So that's the declaration in Android. And then in the application that wants to view the uh, web page, they, you just declare the, the intent, you, you reuse the, the action, and you give the specific uh, URL in this case, so the specific data that you want to send to the third-party application. So, and there's the matching algorithm where you say, OK, you have, for example, the scheme. If the scheme matches, then that's fine. You can be more specific. You can define a MIME type, or you can also define uh, a pass. So you can cover only, for example, in, for web pages, only certain domains. So you have a, uh, a range to uh, specify the filter. So what's interesting is uh, since around yeah, nearly two years, there are people working on the same idea for, for web apps. So you have uh, the, the browser as a platform, and you have app, uh, web apps as the independent uh, components. And now the idea is, how can you delegate the same thing as in Android? And um, yeah, Chrome, the Chrome team, and also the Mozilla are working on standards. At the moment, there are two different standards, but hopefully they will merge in the, in the future. Uh, where you can do the same thing. So you register a web app by visiting the page, or uh, you can even try to do it dynamically. So on JavaScript, you have uh, functions where you can say, OK, I want to register my application for a certain service. And um, then, yeah, you just uh, have a button where you start an activity. So there's the same name uh, as in Android, the same idea. You describe the data you want to send to the other application. And then uh, you get a selection of applications that can do the service for you. And in Chrome, you also have support by the Chrome App Store, where they provide a selection of services uh, that can do it for you. So you don't have to visit all the different uh, services you're using, but you get also suggestions by the App Store. And 
um, so the the Chrome store is, helps you to discover more services, and we are also in discussion to do the same thing on uh, openintense.org uh, for the same for web apps as for Android. So in this case, uh, at the moment, this is uh, available not in the the standard. Chrome browser, but only in the Canary build. So that's uh, the Chrome with the orange um, logo. Um, and so here you see the uh, application is uh, defines via HTML tag that says, OK, I can do the share intent for a certain type. And uh, this is the, the identifier of my application. That's the web app. And then if I click on the, on the share uh, button, I get the selection of the applications. In this case, I've installed three different uh, applications that can do the share. Um, and they are declared in the uh, Google Chrome app ex uh, manifest. So for Chrome, it doesn't really work with the intense tag because it's not yet standardized, um, but you can do uh, through the manifest. So that's uh, here how, uh, sorry, how you do it in JavaScript. Uh, you say you want to start an activity, or if you have a WebKit um, browser, then you say WebKit start activity. Uh, you de define the intent as a new object with the action, what you want to do, and with the data you want to uh, here, MIME type and the data uh, you want to sell in. And then you get also feedback whether the action was successful or not. So you have uh, two callbacks, and then you just start the intent. And interesting, you have also the same ideas, not that uh, cleanly defined, but also uh, a similar approach uh, in Windows Phone. And there, you have certain use cases defined by the platform, and they are quite specific. So they're kind of uh, an API for each specific purpose. And um, there you have the possibility to replace one ap application by the other one. So you can provide third-party applications by services. And um, yeah. It's mainly, so it's not this high abstraction where you say you want to do an intent, so the user wants to do something, but it's really low level event handling. For the developer, it's more complicated to, to get the idea which, how to call it, what are the APIs. So, and as far as I know, there's no really a discovery for the application that can replace it. So this is the code. Uh, as I said, it's really about event handlers, um, and you, in the, uh, if you provide a service, then you define it also in the application manifest. So that's the part about Windows phones, and so to, to generalize um, user task allocation, I try to yeah, formalize it. It's an architecture pattern where semantically defined. Uh, tasks are performed by third-party applications. So there are six different steps. At first, before everything, you have to define the semantics. So what is a user task? What does it mean to share data? And then if everyone agrees on that, uh, you have the process where you register the services, and then the other application, the client, uh, can invoke the service and the platform itself selects which service is used. Then the message is delivered to the service. And finally, you get a response if the, the action has been performed. So what are the advantages? You don't have to program as much as uh, before. Um, you have uh, better, well, yeah. Um, use, so your application is used by more users because other applications are delegating to your application. And um, yeah, 
the problem is a bit that yeah, this, the discovery, as I said, is not that uh, established yet, and um, you have to yeah, you you have to somehow to manage the, this the dependency. So um, in, in the web, the Chrome browser, as I said, uh, helps. There are approaches for Android that can do discovery, uh, inspect the HTML, but there's not that support by Google Play, so it's not that easy. So usually you have to promote it to mailing lists or through other developers. Um, it's not that easy. But um, yeah, so then if you think further, so you don't, if you don't want to have all the different selections of services, you also can explicitly dis define which uh, service you want to use. So that's possible in the same way uh, in Android and also in Chrome, where you just describe a component you want to use. So that's called the explicit um, delegation or explicit intent. Implicit is, is that you just say, OK, I want to share. I don't care which service can do it for me. And if you decide to use this uh, architecture pattern, you have to be aware that you're trusted, well, you're delegating to an unknown, um, uh, unknown um, uh, component. You don't know whether it's installed on the system or whether the user has already chosen a service. So there could be a break in the user experience. Um, alternative, you can say, okay, uh, if the user hasn't installed one component, then he has to go to a defined one that I want to use. So that's where you build a trusted system of components. But you're still open uh, to, to be used by other applications. And um, another thing to, to discuss or to think about is, is the data flow, whether you want to give the data away. So it's especially important for Android, where you have uh, restrictions through the permission system. So one application can uh, get access to private data, like your calendar or your contact details. And if you send this data out to a third party application, uh, the third party application get, might get access to data that wasn't supposed to be delivered to other applications. That's not that much a problem in, in web apps because uh, the application has access to the web app and to the internet. So if the web app can't share the uh, application through intents, then it would use other methods like uh, using uh, um, a call to a home server or something like that. So the, the data are already in the client, are already in the web app. And uh, there's no, not really a concern that the data is, lo um, is given away to others. And um, also, things that aren't really established yet, that's, uh, for example, remote delegation, where you want to delegate a task to another device. So the, the most uh, popular uh, idea is you want to play a video on another screen. You're at home. You have selected your, uh, your, your, your video, and you say you want to play it somewhere else. Uh, that's the play to intent. That's supported by all different three different um, uh, platforms. So you can do it in Android and also in uh, web apps and uh, also in Windows. So. And. Yeah, then you can think further and go through the network and delegate doing something on a certain device that's not really connected to yourself. But um, yeah, they are, they are just uh, experiments that try to use it, and we will see whether it's adapted by the users or by uh, other applications or not. And finally, I want to say a bit about uh, the combination of Android and uh, web intents. So where you can delegate the task to either a web app or to uh, a native Android app. 
So there was a Google Summer of Code project this year. Um, it uh, was developed by a student, uh, Cheng Zeng, and was mentored by our company or by our community, um, Open Intense. And we wanted to create a browser that uh, combines the information about Android apps and web apps. And so we have two registries about the services, and they combined. And we provide a new dialogue where you can select between two different uh, applications. So that's how it looks like. In the top, you have the web apps that, in this case, uh, do the share. And then underneath, you have the selection of the um, Android apps. They can do the, the same. They, they do the same purpose. They do the same action. But the user can choose which to, to use. So yeah, well, that's what, what I wanted to present. And um, do you have questions? So it's really uh, about to be standardized. There's a working group on VW3C. And um, yeah, so you have any questions? Not really. Yeah, OK. Uh, so again, just to summarize on which browsers are actually the uh, ITENs are working or I can use right now, and what, if, what is the time frame to expect for, um, for the other browsers to catch up? So, so at, the, at the moment, it's the uh, Chrome Canary. So it's a special build uh, from Google. It's called Chrome, and um, I can demonstrated so it's a so from since uh, the build number 19 uh, you have support for intents and this is uh, webintense.org where you can try it out and um, so here if you click on share you see exactly this and you get more and more applications that can uh, support it um, actually the, the the standard is in draft mode so it's already progressing, but it's difficult to say when it becomes an HTML standard. Um, in WebKit, you have already the, the code prepared for support for the intent tag. So it's really progressing, but probably you need to wait a year or so to have it really on, in production or so. Any more action, um, actions? No. no. You want to see more code, or I don't know. Then, thank you very much. Yeah, more code. <laughs> yeah. So you can. Yeah. What kind of? So more on Android or? Okay. Then. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Friedger. Everyone, warm applause, please. Thank you.